guys, and welcome to the rollout with yes. me, Genevieve Marie, and I'm Lindsay Rousseau, and you are currently watching on the Fabled 42 Network, where we build community through friendship, gaming, and so much chaos. You can check out this show every Wednesday at 5.30, just a few quick announcements. Uh, everything that you see in most of our campaigns is 3D printed from our friends over at Griffin Co. We are Vorpal powered, so all of our video, audio displays, player indicators, digital dice, brought to you by Vorpal Board, and... For all of your tabletop needs, check out our sponsors, Tabletop Game and Hobby, for a sweet, sweet discount code, which you can find on our website. Um, and also, make sure you stick around at 6.30 for the Realms of Ukador. And Genevieve, what happens if they stick around until Realms? Well, if you happen to stick around till Realms, we have a giveaway in which we are going to be giving away a free video game on Steam, and you will get a list to choose from. Uh, it's really exciting. However, you have to stay through this stream and into the stream of Realms of Ukador to be uh, eligible to get that. Right. So exclamation point raffle to enter and just keep watching. All right. So let's start off with a uh, little news. Genevieve, you uh, have a yes, absolutely. All right. Starting with the news. All right, so if the pandemic had caught, had kept you from catching in on free RPG day, that was this past July on the 25th, don't worry because you can still pick up your free Starfinder and Pathfinder adventures from uh, Paizo on their website. That's exciting. That just came out yesterday. You can pick up uh, your freebies, which are Starfinder Adventure, Skitter Home, and Pathfinder Adventure, Little Trouble in Big Absalom. And that is available on Paizo website. That was available yesterday, and it will be available for uh, at least another week. So go on there and get your free games. Please, because we need them. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, so this, what else? did you have something else? You had something else, right? Yes, yes I do. Also, Modifius has released their yes. new John Carter of Mars map. And it looks so cool. It does. It's a fully illustrated front to back A2 map. And they also have a PDF travel guide complete with the set. So uh, when you get the map, you also have a travel guide. So um, that is for the narrators to have open on their computer when gaming with their friends online which is absolutely important in this day and age because we need to game online together. We can't just gather around a table, which is what this show today is all about. Yes. And so, and on, along those same lines, Wizards actually has a couple announcements they just came out with. Uh, so September 18th to the 20th, is D, D celebration 2020 uh so wizards is hosting an online gaming event that's open to fans all over the world they're doing this to celebrate the release of icewind dale rim of frost maiden so the whole weekend is going to be like icewind dale themed virtual play sessions so check out wizards uh go to their website and you can register for D, &D celebration um and also coming out is the Tasha's Cauldron of Everything rules expansion. So we all love Tasha's hideous laughter, of course. It's an amazing spell. But now we're getting expanded subclasses, more character options, group patrons, um, magical tattoos. I mean, there's so much stuff. So head on over to Wizards website to check that out as well. All right. And that's it for the news. So, Lindsay, what? Yes. We have some very special guests with us today. We do. So yes, we have some amazing guests. So today's theme, we're going to be talking about tabletop gaming without a table because COVID. Um, so uh, our first guest I'll introduce is uh, Thor Knai. He is with the LA D&D &D Society. He is an actor here in LA. He's a DM. He's a D&D &D player. Um, he also has a partnership with Heavy Dragon and is super secret squirrel currently making a tabletop game with wizards that's going to be published by whiz kids later this year or maybe next year at this point um but we are so excited to see that when we can finally talk about that so thor so excited to have you here and then 
Yes, thank you. thank you for having you. Thank you for being here, Thor. And we have Stephen Huff. Stephen Huff is from Creative Combat, and that is a uh, that's from uh, Los Angeles, California. He does all sorts of fighting uh, for film and TV, and he also is a DM uh, that live streams with his players as well. So welcome, guys. Thank you so much for being here. Thank yeah, you. Thanks for having us. So COVID has changed a lot when it comes to D and I mean, obviously those of you guys who watch us here at Google 42, we've been streaming online for two years now, but it's a new experience for a lot of people. So what do you, what do you do if you just can't get your home game anymore? Right. For example, if you have never done an actual virtual uh, tabletop game program, how would you utilize a ta an actual table and have that streamed out to all of your players? Well, for the actual table, I think Vorpal uh, has a solution that uh, that works well. Uh, I haven't personally used Vorpal. We, me, me and my team uh, use Roll20, which we had already used prior, just because they have a great sort of, you know, you put your maps on there and you can put that on a big screen TV and then you can track all the movements and you know, the health of the units and all that stuff, if it's like a big battle or large scale stuff going on. Uh, so that's been very helpful previously, but then when COVID struck, we obviously had to just move the whole thing online. Uh, and we're using Discord mostly or or uh, Zoom to uh, to do sort of the, the voice and, and, and video. And then obviously we have Roll20 as our virtual tabletop. Or um, what's the other one? The um, fa Fantasy Grounds on Steam is another Fantasy one. That works. Yeah. Unfortunately, they all charge their separate fees for all your for yeah. the and the resources. Right. So it's it's you got to sort of pick one and stick with it. Uh, so yeah. A little pricey. <laughs> yeah, it's pricey quick. For those who already have um, uh, actual tabletop like um, stuff <laughs> to do from home, and so you could do it potentially free. Steve, I know you do a lot of stuff at home uh, mm -hmm. using actual uh, sets and miniatures. Can you talk about that and how you're able to do that with your players? Yeah, so unfortunately, I just have not had as much of an opportunity to, as I would have liked to check out like Fantasy Grounds and Roll20. Um, I'm actually getting back into D&D uh, fairly recently. I've been playing since the early 80s, but then kind of, you know, taking a break because of life. So being a DM is also helping me get familiar with the 5e rules. So what I've been doing is... Uh, since I love miniatures and I love building terrain, and to me that's just as much a part of the hobby, um, kind of going cinematic with it, trying to play around with camera angles and the miniatures and building uh, fully fleshed out terrain. Um, I just ran a game yesterday where they are moving through the forest and I spent a couple of days building trees and shrubbery and all of that and uh, sometimes even bringing in lighting effects so it and lets so you, you really create camera on it? yeah 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 so i moved the the camera around to get the different angles as needed um and then and like the drone on the webcam that you as you yeah, fly through exactly. the forest. i love exactly. it, I love it. Uh, yeah. and then you know i can always switch and do like a share screen to show the player map and say, okay, this is exactly your bird's eye view. Um, it takes a little bit of, of time, and yeah. you know, it, I'm still hammering out the getting the right camera angles. Um, you gotta, people have to be willing to excuse that quick, like born identity camera shake as you go from one setup to the other. But that's <laughs> also a good time to do a, a share screen, and then bringing in music, right? Yes, so that's a good time to just play some music. So trying to make it as visual as possible. Yeah. What do you well, use? I, do you use Sirenscape for music or uh, or like yeah, did you we, use, we use Sirenscape here at Fable 42. Oh, cool. Yeah. I yeah. uh, can you Thor, can you tell us a little bit about Sirenscape? Uh, for those who You know, I don't actually use Sirenscape. I if I have music, it's uh mostly the stuff that's already included in Roll20. 
Yeah, uh, they would it. use YouTube when I was like playing at home and just have that all in the background, or when I brought yeah. my laptop or something. But Cyberscape yeah. is is probably really good. I just I've never okay. really it's all it. open source, so like you can upload. I mean, once you upload your music and effects, um, it's open source for the community. So basically you have a link and everybody you invite all of your players to join that link and they just open the sirenscape app and it's just playing while they go and whoever's controlling sirenscape changes up the sound so like oh here's the battle music oh shit it's about to get dirty in here that um, is really cool although i kind of what little i have seen i kind of feel like you need like a producer to really get your full value out of sirenscape well we, we make our dms you know they're required for putting together their their playlist of music and sound effects but yeah it's another added element but you know like our homebrew games yeah i just bring my little bluetooth speaker and set it on the table and have my yeah. youtube playlist going yeah <laughs> excellent it is Sirenscape another, uh, is it free or do you uh, pay to use the app or are there in-app purchases? Oh, do you know? good question. Let's find out. I know Chris knows the answer to this. Um, well, we've posted it in the chat. So uh, we do have Sirenscape posted in the Twitch chat. Um, it looks like there's free versions and there is a paid version. Uh -huh. um, they have it for different types of things. So different sounds. Yeah, you can do subscription version or otherwise. and. Yeah, just access to more stuff, basically. Yeah. Same with Find your music, sci-fi music, D and D. Yeah, so you can just check them out and play around and see, because like you know, like you said, everyone does things differently. Right. Exactly. Um, and it's a matter of you know, because like you know, a lot of us don't necessarily have the funds to do full production value with all of these, and so Zoom and YouTube can be. Yeah just as good if theater especially if it's just theater of the mind or like steve was saying you're just moving your camera around yeah and we ended up actually doing like a, a crowdfunded amongst the players to get the uh because we already had the and currently the lads are playing uh descended to avernus so we have the book obviously and then COVID happened and we had to move it to roll 20 and setting all that up is a massive amount of extra work so we were i was like hey guys i can't quite, you know, how about we all get together and get the thing? They're like, yeah, sure. So we, you know, got together and, and like funded the <laughs> the uh, pre-made then module that had been converted to Roll20 and then has all the maps and all the shortcuts and, and things like that. That makes it a lot, a lot easier to, to do. So Steve and Thor as well, do you feel, because Steve, you said you are just now kind of getting back into it after, you know, break. Do you feel like COVID and being quarantined has given you more opportunities to play? I mean, do you feel like because of this, you are playing more? Um, initially, yes. But then uh, life came back and said, all right, you need to do other things right now. Um, it, it did. Right. And uh, one of the things that being able to play, because uh, for one of the games I'm in, we're going through Skype. and. Uh, for me, it, it's very, very, a very important game because this is a friend of mine that I got into playing the game with back in like 1980. Nice. Uh, so it's been able, you know, we've been able to reconnect and play again for the first time since I moved out to the West Coast. And uh, he's doing the same thing. He's setting up the battle maps and using miniatures, and you know, I'm seeing things that once belonged to me when I was 13, getting used again. <laughs> That's nice. That's so cool. Yeah, I guess note to audience: get rid of nothing, keep everything. Right. Oh man, I still, I still, I have minis from. I don't know if you guys remember Hero Quest, but it was like the the big game back before like Descent. It's a tabletop game. Yes. And uh, the play mat was sort of modular because each you know scenario had a. Uh, it was the same mat, but like the scenario had different rooms were active in each scenario. So instead of having that, I, I cut it up into little pieces so that each room and all the tiles and all that stuff, so now it was completely modular and I've been using that a lot up until just very recently, uh, to, from like 25 years ago to, uh, to for my current d d 5e game. So that's been, yeah. so don't throw it away. It's totally yeah. useful. That, I still have that, a few minutes back when they were toxic. <laughs> On that note, I'm very happy that they're still using the same like scale for minis. 
Imagine how much money and what, what a dick move it would be if there's like, oh, for sixth edition, it's going to be a different scale. Or like, we're going to use hexagon and it's going to be hexagon minis that are different. It would be awful. <laughs> don't do that. No, no, no. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but like for me with quarantine, D&D has been like one of the real opportunities that I've had to be able to like socialize and be creative and you know, see other people and even just the theater of the mind is like kept me stimulated and sane. I mean, Absolutely. how do you, what do you guys think about, I mean, how has that been for you? I mean, in the beginning for me, it was the transition from sitting in the room and, you know, being with people and yelling over each other and, and sort of, you know, going to a place and congregating wasn't, it's not, it wasn't quite the same. Like it's definitely a different yeah. vibe. So at first it was disappointing, but of course, then eventually you, one, you become used to it and two, you need it because there yeah. is no <laughs> collect, there no, there's no congregating anywhere. So right. uh, now it is definitely a lifeline. Uh, and I think at least in the beginning it was, you know, everyone had a lot of time because all of a sudden you're stuck at home. So finding a D and D game and playing a D and D game and putting a little bit of extra creativity into the games you were had going yeah. was definitely easier right at the start. And even now to some degree. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, nothing will ever, ever replace sitting around the table. And actually but, rolling those dice. And yeah, you know, and yeah, that 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 is the 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 vibe of it. But getting creative, you can almost kind of get that connection again. It can get a little create uh, chaotic, and you really have to, you know, it's trial and error. But I, yeah. I find that. Like like Phil was saying, it's so much better than nothing, and it's not the same. But you know, it, it's not too bad. I actually have a point uh, to bring up uh, because of COVID, a lot of new players have been joining into D &D. Yeah. and that's really interesting because they won't have access to the yet to probably dice, miniatures, all of that. So as dungeon masters, as PMs, this is kind of a two-parter, yeah. <laughs> is how do you how do you introduce new people, like for your friends who've never played an RPG before into D&D? How do you get them set up as far as like dice, characters, and, you know, building the rules? How do you Good question. Steve, did you, you just got back into it. Did you have a cool like shortcut for that? Or did you I, already I, have all I'm the sorry, material? there was a, I'm in my, my work office and there was just suddenly a bunch of noise in the background. So, uh, <laughs> sorry guys. So Thor, uh, could you repeat that please? Uh, so she was asking you know, like, how do you go about sort of furnishing new players potentially with materials like, you know, the, the player's handbook or dice or any of that stuff during these times? Have you, did you, have you had any experience with that? Because you obviously just got sort of back into maybe set up a game, right. maybe got some new players, had to get into fifth edition. Yeah, um, one of the things yeah. that I, I have been using a lot of is D&D uh, &D Beyond, um, especially yeah. for the new players, because it's an easy way for them to go through and create characters. Uh, if they don't have dice yet, you, you know, dice yet, you can use the online uh, die roller. And, you know, I have a couple of the uh, source materials available for them as well. So that was kind of when I started this group, uh, we had several players that had never played before or had only played once or twice um, and kind of just had a day where I walked them through using D&D &D Beyond. Yeah. D &D and there's so many like free, you know, basic rule sets available and all of that. Uh, one of the things that I absolutely love is with the rise in popularity, there is so much out there that can makes it easier than ever before to bring new players in. Yeah, absolutely. And for those of you who don't know about Dungeon Master Guild, like the DMs Guild online, is a limitless resource of just yeah. player made missions and content and homebrew rules and maps and whatever you could possibly do. Not just for D and D, I think. Oh, it might be D and D specific, but. That's something to check out. That's dmsguild.com. has like so much stuff if you ever needed content. Yeah. Cheap. Like it's really cheap. 
Yeah. yeah and then D and D beyond as well. I mean, a lot of their stuff is free, you know, the, the, the compendiums and stuff, a lot of that is paid for, but like, if you have questions, I know there's like RPG bot is one of my go-to places when I'm like, I'm going to create a class and race I've never done before. And like, you know, it's very good about writing. Oh, yeah, they let you tinker. Huh? Yeah, they let you tinker on B beyond? No, uh, uh, RPG bot's another website that I use that oh. like goes through and analyzes all the classes and races and like, you know, like has a, has a scale system what's the best and you know, all of that. Okay, cool. Yeah, I didn't know about that. RPG bot? RPG bot. Yeah, nice. <laughs> pop that in that too. Oh, yeah, no, I, can, I can do that. Let's see if I can find that. Um, and obviously this can go beyond just d and I mean, tabletop gaming in general. Um, Thor, Steve, are there other games that, you know, you guys are playing? I know like Pathfinder seems to be big now lately and Cthulhu and yeah, the start the new Star Wars one is cool. The new set, I think they've managed to like get their dice uh, now put digitally somehow, e either on Roll Twenty or, or somewhere. But uh, you can definitely play other games like that. And I, you mentioned earlier that I'm working on this game with uh, with Wizards and WizKids, and uh, we we had play testing in the flesh before COVID, uh, but we moved all that play testing to these virtual tabletops after because. Uh, it's it's so modular that even though they have already there's like pre set up for fifth edition third third edition fifth edition Pathfinder whatever and they already have the rules to help you out you can just upload your own art like our game board oh, wow. and our little game pieces and you know the cards that are in my game so we were able to do a lot of playtesting online and we're, we're sort of still doing that and it's, which also makes it possible to sort of demo the game with uh, uh, WizKids, for instance, who had a lot of their, I mean, their offices are in New Jersey. So we played with them through Roll20 to sort of get them on board with, here's what we're trying to do, uh, and that sort of stuff. So it's definitely possible to play really any game, like even Catan or or even played, uh, my girlfriend had some some stuff at work where it's like, you do, you do code names. They even have their own website where you can just play code names. <laughs> uh, they're, they're already built their own virtual table. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's uh, there's quite a few games out there that I would love to to try my hand at. Um, you know, the reality is there are more games that I would love to try or get back into than I have time. And who would ever be able to play? Absolutely. I know, right? Yeah. Sci-fi and fantasy. I mean, that's as a kid growing up in the '70s, that that was my life. Sci-fi and fantasy. I have done the uh, the new Star Wars RPG. I have done that one via Skype. Um, again, it was a situation where we had a game going. Uh, with that one, it was more an issue with people's schedules. So we were doing that one via Skype uh, every now and then for a lot longer before uh, you know COVID. But. Yeah, I definitely am curious to see where gaming is going to go from here. Yeah, because it seems like a lot of people have just been talking about it more. I mean, obviously, like Critical Role really brought D and D to the mainstream. Um, but I just I remember like I think the New York Times had an article about like the explosion of people playing D and D during COVID who'd never played it before, and it's like you know you know. Pre-COVID, people are like, wait, you sit around for four to six hours and play a game? What? I don't have time for that. Now all of a sudden people are like, I've got time. How do I do this? And you're like, oh. Well, it's a completely different world. I mean, you can go to Target and buy the d, &D starter kit and the essentials kit. I had to go for hours to find specialty gaming stores when I was younger to get anything. And now you can, you know, it, it still just incredible. Well, and I feel like, you know, kind of like Thor, you were asking about new people getting involved in it. Like, I know, you know, when I started gaming, I like, I bought the red box and like literally ah. teach myself how to play it by the myself. Red box? Yes. It does not work. Like you needed to be with someone helping get you. But now with all the online resources, it's like you, I mean, it's still doesn't compare to actually being there, but it's like, like you were saying, Steve, there's so many more resources available now to start figuring stuff out and learning how to do it where maybe you don't have to be sitting with that person to help you, you know, go through every single step. I mean, it definitely helps, but the day changed. 
Yes, that was in the be- in the before times. I have to have somebody hold my hand. <laughs> yeah, we all did at like, some point. We all did it. And I still don't like to play spellcasters. I still don't. <laughs> it's a lot more to keep track of your spellcaster, right, for sure. Yeah. You know, I even, I mean, when it comes to using the, the virtual tabletops, some of them, especially if you're going to be the game master or the dungeon master, there's definitely a learning curve to sort of, oh, here are the tools and all that stuff. So I'm actually two different friends of mine were like, hey, can you, I have, I run a game. I need to move it to roll 20. Can you teach me how to do the thing? And I'm sort of self-taught. And I was like, yeah, here are the basics. Go ahead. And uh, now they're like piecing together these huge maps of like all of water deep on fire. And it's just, it's, it's, I'm like, okay, cool. I'm so proud of you. Yay. The past oh, disaster. Exactly. I'm like, yeah. Oh, yeah, no. It's like point, I mean, players in their game, too. I'm like, yeah. what are you doing? Yeah. Uh, no, he has 11. He has 11 players, and he just did a massive split party water deep fire map. And it was just like, yeah. Right. You, well, yeah. you talked about, you know, new players getting involved to D&D. But, like, do, I mean, just anecdotally, does it seem like more people are wanting to, like, you know, I've been playing. Let's try this DMing thing, you know? Does it, does it seem like more people are trying to pull the gun I- on... I think in general, yes, but I don't. I don't think COVID has necessarily helped that because now there's an additional threshold of like learning the tools online. Yeah. With with that, but I do think it's it generally it's tr- true that people do want to DM, and you know, I think everyone who plays for a year or two naturally gets to a point where they're like, well, if I was DMing, I would have done X, Y, Z in this scenario, oh, and I wish this was true, or in my world, blah blah, and there they go. Right. Yeah. Uh, I actually wanted to touch on professional streaming um, because not only has the D&D sort of people, has it exploded with people playing it, it's also exploded in a way that people are turning it into a business now that they are live streaming their games and they're getting money on, say, on Twitch for it. And, you know, on YouTube, they're monetizing this. And I've seen that absolutely explode and i yeah absolutely uh and i just wanted to kind of (laughs) pick your guys's brains on if somebody wants to do that if somebody actually wants to make their passion their profession what what do they do to start out i'm and i'm talking about basic like streaming etiquette what you say and don't say if you're going to post something to Twitch and what is like what what is the bare minimum of equipment that you need? Steve, have you have you do you have a stream going? Not yet. Not yet. Um, well, I do have a couple of projects, so like but a couple of different things. Um, but I have not started a an ongoing stream yet. Mm-hmm. We we avoided the streaming our games because we wanted it to be like a private kind of experience, yeah. a book club. And there's certain things you know that changed a lot when you have to be in a public space. But yeah. in my case, we, me and some of my friends from the LAD and Society have instead of necessarily streaming it, we've sort of tried to make it more of a profession or get more involved in the community. But with other projects, like we designed this board game, and we have another project that's I can't talk talk even less about. That's that's has to do with virtual tabletop gaming space, etc. So um, I think I really only advice I can give, and I think Table Forty Two and Lindsay we probably know more about the, <laughs> the 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 cameras and stuff. But yeah, in, being involved in the community, and if you can't be there physically, which helps. So LA is a great hub for that kind of stuff because everyone here is creative and do a lot of stuff and know a lot of people that are serving the industry, uh, being the gaming industry even. Um, then you know, just just get get involved online. See if you can find other people with the same interests, because or with the interest of then creating something beyond just your game. You know, good streaming or whatever, because yeah. it's not a thing that you can easily do alone. You really need passionate people to help you yeah. with whatever it is that you're doing. And there yeah, are some resources. Oh, go ahead, Steve. Yeah, uh, I was just gonna to say, you know, that that that's really the the core of this is this is a game that allows you to find those people that you vibe with yeah and take it so far beyond what it 
starts out to be. And, you know, Discord has been a big place for that. I mean, obviously, Table42 has their Discord channel, but D&D Beyond has a Discord channel. Scraticus Academy has a Discord channel. And, like, within those channels, there's chats for DMs looking for players, players looking for games, newbies, you know, asking questions. So, you know, if you are looking for those communities, there's also startplaying.games is a website that just launched a couple months ago where you go on and pay five to 25 bucks to join a game and it has it broken down by how experienced you are, what type of game you want to play. Um, but yeah, to Genevieve's point, you know, streaming takes it up a whole other notch. And, you know, I still have like my homebrew games cause you just want to relax and not have to worry. Like, but you're also in like 37 games at once. Yeah, I in like a thousand games. Whenever I turn on Fable 42, it's like Lindsay's in that game. No, I'm not. Mythical I'm Melee, like, Lindsay. I only have Middle Earth now. I have Middle Earth and then- You just joined Earth. two games right when I joined Discord. I have never been on Discord. I was on there for five minutes and Lindsay's like, I'll do that game, I'll do that game. I never heard of Discord until the COVID, hit, until the COVID crisis hit. And now I'm like, everything is on Discord. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, I'm like, Genevieve, come play in this game. Don't worry, Steve, I'm tapping you for the next ones that we're doing. <laughs> I, I mean, hope I can. I hope I can. I really do. I would love yeah. to play so much more. Yeah. Well, I mean, and that's another thing is, like, if you are looking at doing, you know, this professionally, um, you know, one of our big things here at Fable 42 is is that, you know, there's a lot of veterans within our community. And so we officially partnered with the Wounded Warrior Project. So, you know, we do we routinely do charity streams where we're raising money for the Wounded Warrior Project. We've been doing a lot of collaborative events with them. Um, and, you know, Chris is going to start DMing because uh, for veterans games, because, you know, we've talked about. Previously, like during Gen Con, we had a panel talking about the therapeutic benefits of role-playing games in helping people with PTSD and other, you know, mental conditions. So it can, you know, it really goes beyond, you know, so much more than what I think people think D&D is. Yeah, I think that's part of the appeal that people are starting to realize that. Yeah. And that's great. Um. <laughs> Genevieve, did you, what were you, you had uh, something that you were trying to point out with, um, did we cover equipment? We covered all of that? Uh, equipment, um, well, <laughs> let's just say what we're all using right now. Um, you and I have the same camera. <laughs> we do, yes. I actually, I know it's a log, uh, Logitech. I, do you know like what the number CP, it is? The CP, 299 or 922 pro or whatever yeah i mean i mean and anybody out there you know in the chat if you guys are twitch streamers if you're doing video gaming there's there you go oh that's you the one i have you know get yourself a decent yeah. camera you don't have to break the bank you know you can find all of this stuff for decent rates but yeah you know i have a little audio technica microphone oh and there we <laughs> So her equipment. No. It's like, don't touch me. <laughs> the microphone's angry now. Oh no. Well, while she unsticks herself, I lit I just bought a Yeti X uh microphone and I'm I'm not using it today. I feel uh, I just I didn't plug it in yet because I'm afraid that I'm gonna burst everybody's eardrums. Uh, I need to play around with it a little bit more, but right now I'm just using uh my the speakers on my computer. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So it doesn't have to be expensive. That's kind of our point. Well, and part of it, I think, is also your background, Steve. You have some, you have some interesting things behind you there. Care to show them <laughs> off to the chat? Because yeah. uh, setting up your background is also something else to consider. Like Thor's got some epic swords, and for those of you who don't know Steve and know his work. He knows all things weapons. So can you give us a little tour? Can we, can we see? Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Um, <laughs> usually I do game from home. So I have all of my materials and all of that there. Um, but uh, yes, this is my office. Welcome to the Creative Combat office. I'm, I'm sorry, this is gonna get really shaky. But okay. uh, the here is just, I think this is what she really wanted to 
to show. So we're given a little tour, uh, just some of the weapons. Um, some more weapons. Yeah. Uh, trying not to make everybody sick. <laughs> uh, stunt gear and harnesses, pulleys, rigs, uh, more gear. And then up above me, I don't know if we'll be able to see it, but uh, crash pads and and all of that. Yeah. Uh, if you don't know what that is, those are the pads you fall on when yeah, you sorry, do stunt yeah. Yeah. And don't worry, Steve will be back on this show to talk more about some of these weapons and, uh, you know. That's how you listed fighting in a five foot space is one of the things you were talking about. I'm like, cool, I want I want to see that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, what can you do uh yeah. in the five foot space? Feel like. and, and really D D, it's going full circle because it was D D that fueled my interest in uh European style weaponry. I had already been doing Eastern martial arts uh at the time, but then you know that, that really led to a whole other thing. So yeah, yeah. Um, the other side of life. And then back to D and D. Yeah, exactly. Yes, uh, Steve is a um, edged weapons expert and hand-to-hand -hand combat expert. Outside of doing what he does for stunt work in Los Angeles, so he also does uh, martial arts classes and stuff. So if you wanted to actually learn the real art, you can take classes from him at Creative Combat. If you wanted to learn how to do the stage fighting and fighting for film, you can also take classes from him. Yes. But we're going to have him on more shows to explain um, the logistics of fighting in a five by five foot square, which is what you do as a D what your D and D mini does <laughs> when they're fighting in their five to five foot square. Uh, we're going to have him back on for a lot more things, especially how to. Do you, how to carry your weapons? Is the sword on your back a good thing to do or not a good thing to do? The Witcher does it, so should I? <laughs> the Witcher does it, I can too. <laughs> That's the name of that episode then. <laughs> the Witcher so how I see that becoming something, combat. people saying going into the emergency room. <laughs> mm. um, well, I mean, we're, we're getting close. Chad, if you've got any last minute questions, throw them up there. Oh, okay, here we go. Steve, what is your favorite martial weapon? Uh, this is gonna sound so cheesy, but you know, it, martial concepts all come down to one thing, understanding core combative principles. It's not the, the weapon, it's the ability to utilize the weapon as an extension of oneself. You know, so the mind, really, you know, the ultimate weapon is the ability to understand the concepts behind their use. That is so deep. So deep, but I'm going to re I'm gonna rephrase the question. In the zombie apocalypse, if you were left with one martial weapon, there we go. what would it be? And your mind. Uh, <laughs> you still have your mind. It's it's a a How much ammo do I have for my Sig 226? Let's, let's no, that's, okay, I'm Let's sorry. I mean, with historical martial um, weapons, three gunpowder. You know, for, for Something where I got to deal with a lot of opponents, a shorter bladed sword or an impact weapon like an axe. You know, I, I love a good hatchet. I love a good axe. I feel I, you. I <laughs> such a tool, such a multi-use tool. Make a fire, crush some enemies, drive them before you, listen to the lamentations of their women. That's covering all the yeah. yeah. He's got an entire bin of axes, only axes. I've seen it. <laughs> it's I, I love weapons. I, I love, you know, the sword is always going to be my, my absolute favorite weapon. Um, but yeah, whatever I have at hand. Which sword? Uh, all of them. <laughs> so <many>. Duh. Duh. <laughs> Awesome. Well, do you guys have anything you want to plug or push or anything else you want to add? Chat, last call for questions because we are going to wrap it up here. Where can we find you on the social medias? I see some of your, I see your, there you go. The, the thing here, there it is. This is all reverse. <laughs> so yeah, so if you want more information about training, hit up Steve. Also, if you want to know the history of anything weapon related, he's also your guy. Obviously, Thor's always got amazing things going on. You know, if you want to find out when this
cool, cool tabletop game is coming out. Make sure to check him out on the socials. Yeah, we're just waiting for when we can start talking about it. So hopefully I'll be back to talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm, now I'm, I'm also curious, but we're also going to pull him into the you to the place, yeah. Steve. <laughs> <laughs> you will be uh, part of it. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll, we'll get back to that for sure. Um, but I, I'm Thor Nye, at Thor Nye on all of the social media, Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff. Um, and also on Instagram, we have the L-A-D-N-D Society. So instead of the ampersand, we have the N, obviously. L-A-D-N-D Society. We have uh, we post all of our like fun things there and our supporters. Um, but yeah, that's, that's it for me. Awesome. Uh, so for those of you who haven't yet, who joined us a little late, uh, if you do have... Uh, Jeez Louise, exclamation point raffle right now. You will be entered into a raffle for a video game from Steam, but you have to stay tuned. Can I like join? Can I put it in? Yes, go for it. Uh, so, but you have to stay. So here's the catch. Uh, exclamation point raffle right now. But we have the season two premiere of Realms of Ecuador starting in 20 minutes at 6.30. Got a couple familiar faces, some new faces, all new characters, all new adventures. Um, and for those of you who are new to Fable 42, Realms of Ukador was our flagship show um, with uh, Dungeon Master Chris Solo, who is the founder of this network. So, Yay. yeah. Is that all we got, Genevieve? I think that's all we got. Stay for the raffle. Uh, thank you so much for joining yeah. us. Thor and Steve, thank you so much for coming on. Pleasure. <laughs> yeah, and next week thank we'll you. be here back at 5.30 and we will be, what is our theme next week, Genevieve? Uh, it's cosplay, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even write that. Cosplaying <laughs> for all day play, is that what we call it? Yes. yes, it's cosplay for all day play, which means yes. we're going to be covering everything from rent fairs to conventions to LARPing. It is cosplay for, built for comfort. What yes. shoes to wear, what shoes not to wear. And we're going to be joined by Alicia Marie. You can find her as Alicia Marie Body on Instagram. And we're also going to be joined by Liz Metcalf. So, oh, those yes. people are both awesome. I know both those people. Yeah. Yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in to our first episode. We look forward to spending many, many, many more with you. Absolutely. Yes, thank you. All right. Bye, guys. All right. Good to see everyone.